Blender is absolutely jam-packed with features. So that's why I've decided to show you some of my favorite tips and tricks. Stick around for all of them because you don't want to miss anything in this first edition of things you can do in Blender. Tip number one transparent video. Now when doing video editing, oftentimes you'll need transparent video renders, which you can incorporate in your video footage. This can be tricky in Blender, but there is a way to do this. I've got this simple animation and let's turn it into a transparent video. First thing to note is that you need to go to the render settings and into film and make sure you have the transparent option checked. This will make sure that the render turns out transparent. Assuming you've got everything set up, go to the output properties tab and let's change a few settings here. The output here is set to PNG file format. Now PNG has three color options, black and white, RGB and RGBA. RGBA is what contains the alpha data, which is what the A stands for. And you can use this to get a transparent PNG image out of Blender, but we want a video. So let's change the file format to FFmpeg video and you'll immediately notice that we no longer have the RGBA option. Now, if we scroll down here, we have the encoding and the video tab. For the encoding container, instead of Matroska, we'll use QuickTime, which is one of the only containers that's actually supporting alpha transparency. And for the video codec, instead of H.264, we'll use QT Arly QT Animation. Immediately after choosing this video codec, you'll notice that we now have the RGBA option. Now select RGBA, which will enable the alpha transparency in the video render, hit render and hit render animation. And will you have it, there it is, a transparent video, which you can incorporate in any video editing software. Tip number two, material override. If you create an amazing piece of art that you want to showcase, you might want to show all of the time that you've spent on modeling and detailing. Now there's a very great way of doing this and we'll usually call this clay renders. What? That's those awesome renders that only use default materials, but still have all of the lighting, depth of field, ambient occlusion, and all of the good stuff. So it really emphasizes the time you spend on modeling small details in your scene. Over here, I have this great scene open, which was done by Alex Trevino. It used to be an old splash screen for Blender. So if you render out this frame, it will look something like this. Pretty awesome, but it doesn't really showcase all of the detail that he spent on modeling all of these parts in the scene. Now, I used to be a bit of a dumb dumb, and if I wanted to make such a scene, what I would do is I would take an object and I would just remove the material and it would automatically convert it to a default white material. Now this would take me ages uh, because I did all of this manually. <laughs> So yeah, turns out you can just do this with a couple of clicks. Anyways, so what we want to do now is we need to create a default material which we can use. So I'm just going to keep this object selected, add in a new material, make sure it's the second material so it doesn't actually override it in the scene and just add in a new one. And for now, I'm just going to call this material override. So that's a uh, name which I can find. And now we can just hop on over to the view layer properties here, scroll all the way down until we see this override tab. And in here we have the material override. Now look up the material that you just created, which in my case is called override and just select that and voila, it will automatically convert all of the materials in your scene to this default white material. Now there's nothing I've done to this material, it's completely default and that's exactly what you want. So we still get the lighting, we still get all of the ambient inclusion, all of the good stuff going on, but none of the texturing that distracts a viewer from all of the modeling that has been done for this awesome scene. So perfect for creating your own portfolio pieces. Now, I hope you've been enjoying the content so far. I'm also curious, do you have any Blender tips that you think the world should know? Leave a comment down below and I'll get to it. I'll maybe even include them in the next video containing Blender tips. Tip number three negative lighting. Usually when we add in lights, they have the function of creating emphasis and contours for objects in the scene. Now we can also use them in a separate manner and that is to make things darker. Now this might sound strange, but we can actually do this in Blender. So I've got this specific scene open at a very simple tent scene that I have where there's two hanging lamps here and we can just add in point lights for these, which will create a nice atmospheric lighting on the inside of our tent. They will also create emphasis on certain objects. For example, this thing over here and we get some nice highlights, rim lights and stuff over here. So that's the perfect way to use lighting in a scene. However, we might want to create certain areas that are a bit darker, for example, down here under the bar and maybe on the right side or in the back behind to create a bit more contrast between the back of the tent and the beginning of these objects here. Now I've got a collection of lights which do exactly that. If I now enable them, so this is with the lights that eat up the light and this is the regular view. Now it's subtle, but that's the right way to do this. You want to use them sparse 
sparsely because they can become obvious and too dark really fast. So for example over here I have an area light which shines down and it eats up just a little bit of light. So with the strength set to minus 200 instead of minus 20 you'll notice that everything becomes completely black. That's because it eats up all the light in this specific area. So you need to be subtle with it and keep it at lower values. So over here again the real scene with no light being eaten up and this with the lights that actually make the scene darker. A great way to get some artistic control over your project. Tip number four, bevel like a pro. Over here we just have a default cube with some scaling and a bevel modifier applied with some smooth shading as well. Now if we want to make this thing round over here so for example we want to make sure that this sort of looks like this. What we'll usually do is we'll just go into edit mode here select these two faces and then we'll hit control B and start beveling this. Now we'll just eyeball this pull it in and I guess this works it does what it needs to do however it's not perfect we need to eyeball this thing we need to make sure that it works we can make the gap too small make the gap too big and especially if we take it too far we get all kinds of messed up geometry so instead what we'll do is let's go over here into edit into preferences add-ons and look up this add-on called loop tools let's make sure that's enabled and we can now just delete the top face so select the top face hit x and choose faces to delete it choose edge select again and choose these two edges like before. Now instead of filling this in with F what we'll do is we'll right click and choose bridge edge loops. Now this will recreate the face and we'll be left with exactly the same thing as before. However we now have access to this menu over here and there's two things that we need to change here to get a perfectly half circle beveled object. So first of all is these number of cuts. Now you can set this to any value that you want. Obviously the lower you'll go the more jagged the bevel will be. So let's start off by six and for now let's change the interpolation and set it to blend surface. So now it will just round off everything and it will look nice but like I said it's a bit jagged because we only have six cuts so instead I'm just going to use 16. Tap out of edit mode. Now there you have it. This results in a perfectly beveled half circle ending for all your modeling needs. Tip number five. A volumetric light rays. In certain cases adding in rays of light to your scenes is a major improvement. A great way of doing this where you get full control and also it renders out pretty quickly is to use volumetric lighting. Now I'll show you how to do this. So over here we have a nice little room scene. It has lights, it has objects, it has nice light coming through the windows with shadows and everything so it's already quite moody. But we want a light ray to come in through the window and add that extra level of detail and moodiness to the scene. Now there's a very easy way to do this and that's actually to just select the window. I'm just gonna go into uh, solid view real quick. So select the window, tap into edit mode and let's make sure we are on face select here. Let's select all of the window parts where the light is actually coming through. So it's just all of these blue parts here. And I'm just going to hit shift D to duplicate these faces, escape out of that and hit P and choose selection. This will separate these faces into their own object, which I'm just going to call ray. If I now hide the window, you'll see that we now have these separate faces. Let's select our ray object and tap into edit mode on that. Hit A to select all of the faces and hit E to extrude. We can now extrude them outward towards where the light is shining and actually pull these down with G. So G and pull them down and maybe scale them up and G again, pull them down. And let's just go into render view and usually it'll save the material. So in this case, the glass was glass, obviously. So the rays are now glass as well. So we can eyeball sort of where this is going. I'm just gonna scale this up, G and X again, you know, sort of align it with where everything is going. Maybe pulled slightly to this side. Something like this works just fine. We have the object over here and I'm just gonna pull in a new window here, which I'm gonna set to the shader editor. And we now have have the array object selected which contains all of the previous materials which were uh, enabled for this window object. So I'm just going to delete all of these. I'm just going to add in a new material. In this window I'm going to delete the principal BSDF. It's completely black now. We can easily fix this by just adding in a emission node, plugging this into the volume and voila we now are getting volumetric lighting for these rays. It's a bit too strong and the color isn't completely right but we can fix that. So first of all let's change the color, set it to I don't know some blue gray or color which sort of represents the moonlight color and then let's set the strength so I'm going to start off by setting it to 0.05 I think this still might be a bit too strong so 0.01 we now have perfect light rays coming from our window really selling the effect that we have a nice hazy room and there you have it easy light rays to add a lot of atmosphere to your environments and scenes the best tip I can give you is to join the patreon just like all of these amazing people over here have you'll get access to all of the files used in this video 
as well as to 50 other project files that I have created. Most importantly though, you'll help out the channel so I can keep on making this content for you. It's my intention to make this an ongoing series where I do this type of video every now and then. If you enjoyed this content, then please leave a comment down below letting me know what you think of it. And also please share your tips with me. I might even include them in the next tips video. As always, thank you so much for watching and if you're curious on how to achieve this, then click here and watch this video next.